So we are going to be moving to mass movement. So the syllabus asks us specifically to look at the definition and the causes and result of mass movements, specifically landslide and soil creep. So those are the things that we are going to cover because that is exactly what the syllabus asks us to cover. So mass movement, definition, causes and results of mass movement. These are the things that we are expected to cover according to the CSEC geography syllabus. So mass movement. Mass movement is also called mass wasting. Mass in this particular case means a lot. It means that a lot of movement is taking place. So mass wasting is also known as mass movement. It refers to the movement of the weathered material. So remember when we were looking at weathering and the definition of weathering, I stated that we must mention the in situ part, which is the fact that the material does not actually move. It just breaks down. So that material that has been weathered, this is where the material now moves through the process of mass wasting. So this is the movement of weathered material downslope because of the influence of gravity. And pay attention to the fact that it says downslope. So if it is just flat land and there is no slope at all, that weathered material would just stay exactly where it is. But if there is a slope, you will have gravity influencing the movement of things. And as a result of that, the weathered material or the material that has now become loose from the rock breaking apart, it will now move through this process of mass wasting, right? So the syllabus asks us to look at fast movement as well as slow movement fast movement in the form of landslides and slow movement in the form of soil creep. So there are several different other types of slow movement and several different other types of, of um, fast movement, but the syllabus specifies that we should look at landslide and soil creep. So slow movements, I just dropped another example there, is rock creep. So just by looking at the word alone, creep. Who you know creep? Baby. Exactly. And they're pretty slow. You have some babies that do some sp speed creeping, but babies are pretty slow. So once you see creep, you know that the movement is not very fast. It is very slow. It's a slow movement that is taking place. So rock creep, soil creep, those are all slow movements. Okay. Um, so soil creep, as the syllabus asks us to look at specifically, this is a very slow but generally continuous movement of soil downslope. So it is a slow movement. We can't necessarily see it with our naked eyes. We can't, we can't look at it and see that the soil is creeping. We have to look at other evidence to suggest that the soil is creeping, right? So it is, it is a continuous movement of the soil down the slope. So this normally happens in areas where the soil is damp. So what should I say now? Let me use, um, hmm, I don't know what from your kitchen, but things, when you have water in it and it becomes damp, it gets heavier, it gets heavier. So if it is flow and you add water, it's heavier, right? So you add water, it's heavier. It's heavier than it usually is. So if we dampen the soil, then it is become, it's going to become heavier. So heavy things would move faster. The water itself also acts as a lubricant. So it makes it a little slippery. So it allows the soil particles to move as well. So that is where the soil creep would take place. So eventually the movement of soil 
tilts, fences, posts, and even trees. Soil will accumulate behind walls, etc. So these are the evidence of soil creep that is taking place. So for your exam, what we have seen so far, they've actually given this picture in the exam and asked for you to identify from the picture um, evidence of soil creep. There has been cases where they ask you to draw a diagram showing evidence of soil creep. So pretty much you would be required to draw this diagram that is here to show the evidence of soil creep taking place, right? So that is how I've seen them use evidence of soil creep in the, in the past papers so far. So where soil creep is concerned now, it's usually on, on slopes that are less than five degrees. The rate of soil creep is less than one centimeter per year. So we can't really see it taking place. It's happening, but we cannot see it. So the only thing that we can really look at is the evidence of soil creep. So what causes it in the first place? Rain lubrication can cause it. And we mentioned that before with the water that is present. Freeze thaw action can cause it. And we know what freeze thaw action is from um, weathering. And then animal, animals burrowing through the soil can also cause it because they would be putting pressure on a particular area that would cause movement where the soil is concerned. Thermal expansion and contraction. So that would be as a result of temperature as well. That would actually cause the soil to contract and expand and cause movement to take place. So those would have been our evidence that soil creep is taking place. Some actual real life examples are like this. So these are gravestones. So the gravestone itself actually has moved. So, you know, sometimes you probably go to a graveyard to visit a family member that has passed and you notice that the grave, the gravestone has actually shifted. It's just that soil creep is taking place in that particular area. Uh, the other one, the other example is the bending of these fences here. It is showing that soil creep is actually taking place along this roadway. We can see the bend in the electricity poles as well. Those are our examples of soil creep taking place. So the next movement is the fast movement. And there, there, there are some examples there, falls and slides, just like they sound when you think about it. They happen quickly, falling and sliding. So examples would have been rock falls, landslides, rock slides, etc. So the one that we are required to look at as per the CSEC syllabus is landslide. So landslides, a landslide is a sudden movement of rock or soil downslope under the influence of gravity. So you notice again that the word slope the presence of a slope is important in both soil creep as well as in landslide. Because if we did not have a slope, the weathered material would sit exactly where it is with that kind of movement would not be taking place. The mass movement would not be taking place. So the presence of the slope is very, very important, right? So that's it for landslides. We have different factors that affect mass movement. So when we say factors affecting, we are talking about the things that help it to occur, the causes of it things that help it to actually take place. So factors that affect the mass movement is the gradient of the slope. So we mentioned slope earlier in both landslide as well as in soil creep. So the gradient of the slope, this really means the steepness of your slope. So the first one is the gradient of the slope, which is really talking about how steep your slope is. Then we have human activities, 
water, presence of vegetation, and earthquakes and volcanic activity. Just from the actual shaking movement that occurs as a result of this, so the vigorous shaking will cause loose materials to fall down the slope. So this causes the loose material to fall down the slope. Whether it is fast or slow, earthquake and volcanic activity would still cause that. So let us look at the gradient of the slope first. So gradient, we're talking about steepness, slope steepness. So if the slope is not very steep, so if it is less than five degrees in steepness, then we would expect soil creep to be taking place. But if you have a very, very steep slope, you are more likely to experience landslides. So if the material is going to be falling down the slope, if it is a very steep slope, it will fall faster and more material will move. But if it is gentle, it's not gonna go very far and it will not move so quickly either. So you will have a creep happening rather than an actual slide. So in this diagram, we are seeing mud flows. Um, we are seeing creep taking place. So this is, the, this is a diagram that is similar to the one that you were shown earlier, where we are seeing the evidence of soil creep that is taking place. Landslides, no. Those would need to have a slope so all the material can actually run down the slope. And it would settle at the base of the slope. So the steepness of the slope is very, very important. Then we have human activities. So we carry out activities that causes landslides to take place or influences the movement of materials down the slope. So we are building things. We are cutting down slopes to build roads. We are um, cutting down trees to build houses, etc. So all of these activities affect or influence mass movement to take place. So first thing, removing vegetation from slopes. We know that vegetation has roots. We know that these roots, once they are inside the soil, they are holding the soil in place. They are holding the soil together. So if we are to remove those trees and remove the very thing that is actually holding the soil together, then the soil becomes very loose. So once the soil is loose, then it is likely to fall down. So it's like you're wearing a pants that can't fully fit you and you have on a belt. So in this case, the tree roots would have been the belt. So once you remove the belt, the pants gonna fall down because the material is now loose, it can't fit you no more, right? So similarly here, if we remove the vegetation, the material is now loose, so it is easy, easy to just fall down the slope once we have removed the vegetation. The other thing that we do as humans, we build on unstable slopes. You ever drive through some places and you see some house catch up at some part? And you wonder to yourself, who put that there, sir? All them do that. Like nobody thinks it through. You wonder to yourself, right? So we build on unstable slopes. And because we build on unstable slopes, we put additional strain on the slope itself. So when we put that additional strain on the slope itself, it causes the slope to now fail. It causes it to actually fall down, okay? So the next one is the undercutting the base of slopes to build roads. So think about it. If we have a slope like this, right? That is my slope and I have my trees up here, so and all of that. 
uh, my trees on my slope. And then now I want to build a road. So I just come here so with a tractor and decide, say, all right, I'm gonna just build a road right here so. So I start cutting out in here so. So all of this material now, all of this area now becomes empty. So this becomes my slope. What do you think is gonna happen with the material that is on here? The material is going to become unstable and they are going to fall. They're gonna fall in the road. So that is where you have rock falls and landslides, etc. And you will see people put up actual um, signs to say, beware of rock falls when really and truly we are the ones that did it as human beings because we undercut the base of the slope just so that we could build a road, right? So human activities play a major role in the movement of materials, in how we can actually have landslides and those things taking place. Then we have water. Water acts as a lubricant. It makes things easier to flow. So when we have rocks like shale or clay, which becomes very, very slippery when they are wet, any material above a layer of shale or clay is just going to slide off when it becomes wet. So if we have a layer of, so say this is my slope, right? This is my slope and these are my rock, materials underneath. So this is just um, soil at the top there. Then this is my clay layer. And then I have some other material down here, right? So when it is raining and the water is percolating or coming through, seeping below, since this is my clay layer, when we have lots of material around clay, I don't know if you've used clay before or played with clay before, but clay is very, very, very slippery. So once you have the clay gets wet, everything that is above the clay is going to just slide off. So all of what is at the top is going to just slide all the way off. So what we would end up with now is just the clay that is left there. So the water would have acted as a lubricant and it would have caused all of that material to slip off. So in the Caribbean, as well as in other areas, but we would have heard about the Caribbean mostly, you would realize that we get our landslides after heavy rainfall. Yes, so once we have heavy rainfall, you can expect that some place in the country, somewhere, you are going to have material that is sliding down the slope as a result of that. So heavy rainfall, it saturates the soil, so it gets a little heavy, and it also reduces the friction, so it makes it slippery now, so it increases the possibility of landslides. So if you have an area that already had a slope, and then you already had some loose material on it, once it starts to rain, that loose material is just going to wash away. Some other factors that influence landslides, when there's a thick layer of unconsolidated material. So unconsolidated means loose. But this is the geographic term for it, so you may see it on your exam somewhere. So it means, it just means loose material. Right? You know, sometimes when you pull out a tree or pull out a little weed or something, how all of the soil just comes up, it just loosens up really quickly. That would have been your unconsolidated material. So it's not solid, it's not compacted. So this thick layer, once you have a thick layer of loose material on the slope, such as sand or clay or volcanic ash, like we had in St. Vincent recently. Once you add some water to that, then the landslide will take place. So we know that, well, we should know that if we add 
water to volcanic ash, what do we get? Start with the L. Lahar. Lahar. Very good. Lahars. So once you add water to that, you would have gotten lahars. Once you add the water to lots and lots of clay or sand or other loose soil, you will have a landslide. So all of this material is just now going to run down the slope, right? So that's another factor that influences landslide. Then we have when bedding planes are roughly parallel to the slope surface. So it makes it easier for the material to slide along the bedding planes. So that little diagram that I drew a while ago with the, this one, with the clay. So once the bedding plane is parallel, so they're all running in the same direction, but they're not meeting once they're parallel, it makes it easier for an entire layer to actually just slip off. So materials can easily slide along the bedding plane, especially if we have an impermeable layer that is underneath the permeable layer. So if we have a layer that the water cannot pass through underneath, and then there is a layer that the water can pass through, it means that it's going to block somewhere because it cannot go through the layer that is impermeable. So all of that permeable layer is now going to get very, very saturated. In other words, you're going to get full of water. And then that top layer is now going to just slide off and all of that material is going to go with it. Okay? Whenever you get almost anything in geography, that ask you about effects of a natural disaster, effects of any one of these things, you can always put loss of life, destruction of habitat, destruction of property, destruction of economic activity. So no matter which kind of disaster it is, all of them cause loss of life, destruction of habitat, destruction of property, and disruption of economic activities. Well, they also cause displacement of animals and people, all of them. So it doesn't matter which one they ask you, you can always write the same thing. Question, explain one natural factor that influences the occurrence of a landslide. Explain one natural factor that influences the occurrence of a landslide. 